Hello everyone and welcome back to another Met Project presentation. I just want to quickly give credit to Dr. Bafaki for preparing this presentation himself. And now without further ado, let's talk about today's topic in neuroanatomy, which is anatomy of the scalp. I'll begin with defining the scalp, which is the soft tissue envelope of the cranial vault. Basically all of the tissue layers surrounding the cranium. The scalp is composed of five layers in the corresponding order. The skin, connective tissue, aponeurosis, loose areolar tissue, and the pericranium. Boundaries of the scalp in the anterior aspect starts at the supraorbital margins. Posterior aspect ends at the external occipital protuberance and superior nucleoline. And the lateral boundaries include the zygomatic bone. As we have mentioned earlier, the scalp consists of five layers. The skin, connective tissue, the epicranial aponeurosis, loose areolar tissue, and the pericranium. Pay attention to the following slide for a quick visualization. Feel free and pause the video to differentiate between the different layers. Next, we will discuss each layer separately in order from superficial to deep. First layer is the skin. The skin obviously consists of hair follicles, which begin at the surface of the epidermis. Furthermore, the skin contains mainly two types of glands, including sebaceous glands and eccrine sweat glands. Sebaceous glands are microscopic exocrine glands in the skin that secrete an oily or waxy matter called sebum to lubricate and waterproof the skin and hair. Eccrine glands are the major sweat glands of the human body. Moving on, we also have the root hair plexus, which are the nerves surrounding the base of each hair, and like most tissues and organs, of course, the skin has its own blood supply. Last but not least, the skin layer of the scalp has cells, called melanocytes, which are responsible for pigmentation by, by producing melanin. The second layer after the skin is the connective tissue. Connective tissue of the scalp is a dense subcutaneous layer of fat, containing fibrous tissues. This layer contains nerves and the main arteries and veins of the scalp. The third layer of the scalp, the aponeurosis, also known as Gallia aponeurotica, is a tough tendinous sheath that is a part of the occipital frontalis muscle system. It also connects the temporalis and auricular muscles laterally. The following layer is the loose areolar tissue which is also a connective tissue layer. It allows the more superficial layers to slide as one unit and is a common area of infection spreading. It is composed of a central dense collagenous layer and is surrounded by vascularized areolar tissue. The pericranium is basically the parosteum of the skull bone which provides nutrition to the bone. It is strongly attached to the cranial sutures and has three boundaries, including anterior where it starts at the frontalis, posterior where it terminates at the occipitalis, and lateral from the origin of the temporalis muscle. Now we will talk about the blood supply to the scalp. There are five main arteries that supply the scalp with blood, arising mostly from the external carotid artery. They include the occipital artery, the posterior auricular artery, the superficial temporal artery, the supraorbital artery, and the supraocular artery. Next, we will discuss the scalp's innervation. In the innervation of the scalp, there are five posterior to the auricle, which are spinal nerves, and five anterior to the auricle, which are trigeminal nerves. For both the posterior spinal nerves and the anterior trigeminal nerves, there are four sensory and one motor nerves for a total of five, in each respective region mentioned. The four sensory nerves anterior to the auricle include the supratrochlear nerve, the supraorbital nerve, the zygomatico-temporal nerve, and the auriculotemporal nerve. The four sensory nerves posterior to the auricle include the great auricular nerve, the lesser occipital nerve, the greater occipital nerve, and the third occipital nerve. Finally, the motor nerve that is posterior to the auricle is the posterior auricular nerve, and the motor nerve that is anterior to the auricle is the temporal branch. Last but not least, we will discuss the muscles of the scalp. There are five main muscles associated with the scalp, which includes the temporalis muscle, the frontalis muscle, the occipitalis muscle, the auricularis muscle, and the orbicularis oculi muscle. This concludes today's video. If you have benefited from this presentation in any way, please show your support by liking and sharing the video and make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more content in the future. And remember, you sacrifice more, you get more success. You sacrifice little, you get little success.